Hello and welcome to The Cozy Painter. My name is Sky, and today I'm making miniature bases in the style of Dark Souls games by From Software. This video is a follow-up to my video about painting cursed city skeletons. I explain my thought process for painting in the style of these games, and the same concepts apply in this video, so I would recommend watching that one first if you haven't seen it. To capture the visual language of Dark Souls, let's take a look at some screenshots from Dark Souls 3 which, in my opinion, had the most cohesive art direction in the series. Right away, we can see elements of the world that are reoccurring throughout the series. Flagstone, candles, and tombstones. Flagstones, mud, tombstones, flagstone, weathered brickwork, various skulls and bones, flagstones, candles, flagstones, tombstones, flagstones, leaves, discarded armaments, and of course, swords. 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 Yeah, swords. Oh, look at those. Now that we have some understanding of Dark Souls world design, let's start making some props for our bases. Popsicle sticks make for easy tombstones, and polystyrene sheets can make nice square flagstones. I recommend scoring it with a knife and snapping it off rather than trying to cut all the way through with your knife. Be sure to cut various widths for more variety in your stonework. I'm weathering the flagstone with my hobby knife to give a less uniform appearance. Now let's make some tiny bricks. Adam from the YouTube channel Tabletop Minions has a tutorial on making bricks from craft foam using a square hole punch. It's a cheap method to get as many bricks as you could ever need. I 3D printed a variety of candle styles, but Jeremy from the YouTube channel Black Magic Craft has a tutorial for making scale candles out of toothpicks and Q-tips. This is a great way to make candles if you don't have access to a 3D printer. Using green stuff, I sculpted some tiny flames for the candles and glued them to most of the candles that I used. Now that the props are done, let's get started on the base itself. Jay from the YouTube channel Eons of Battle recommends using Crayola Model Magic to sculpt the geometry of the base. I super glued a chunk to the base and mold the shape I want for the ground layer. Once that's done, I combine wall spackle, cheap black craft paint, and fine grain sand from the Pacific Northwest to make an incredibly cost-effective alternative to expensive hobby texture paint. Ooh! I spread a small layer of PVA glue, then spread the texture paint on top of it. This can get a bit messy, so be careful not to get too much on the rim of the base. Now let's start attaching our props to the base. A bit of super glue holds this popsicle tombstone in place. As well as the polystyrene flagstone, which I sink down into the texture paint. I then copied these steps with various amounts of each prop to get more variety in the bases. Something to keep in mind while placing the props is how the model will actually fit on the base. Some of the skeletons I'm using are wide and flat, while others are skinnier but run longer front to back. Be sure to have an idea of where the model will stand and what will be visible around them. Skulls should be an easy bit to come by for anyone collecting Games Workshop products, but I 3D printed these ones. The small foam bricks are pretty versatile. You can use them for scattered debris on the base, use them to build elevation, or even stack them into a brick wall. Dark Souls has no shortage of grave sites, with each one containing its own specific flavor of tombstones, coffin, or sarcophagi. Here I'm using the leftover popsicle sticks to model a giant coffin that's partially submerged in the earth. 
I glue a bunch of candles to the top, and using a hot glue gun, I apply small runoffs around the bases of the candle to represent wax melting down the sides. The structure of the bases are finished, so now I move on to painting. I apply a black primer through the airbrush, followed by a lighter coat to better show the details. The colors I'm using are mostly from the previous skeleton painting video. I paint the textured ground a desaturated medium brown. Then I start to mix various shades of gray to work on the flagstone. In real life, stones are not just gray. There's a near infinite number of small variations across any number of rocks. Using a stippling motion, I apply dozens of micro layers of green, brown, gray, and blue, working back and forth to blend the colors together. I focus the highlights towards the front of each of the flagstones. Using various washes, I add variety to the plain brown soil. And I apply a light gray dry brush over the entire base moving only from the front towards the back. I continue to add more light color variations into the soil and flagstones. I apply the same technique to all of the tombstones as well. Now I begin painting the candles, using a mix of warm bright tones. Next I prepare a spot highlight for object source lighting. I apply a thin yellow ink while blocking the camera, followed by a smaller spot highlight of an orange ink. The left model has only orange, while the right is the mix of orange and yellow. These are all the bases so far. There's a lot of variety, but it's really just the same couple elements applied in different ways. Now let's get started painting all of these swords. This is a special deal. Swords. Yes, this is, I mean, take another, let's get another close up of, of, of swords. this. I start with a coat of lead belcher, followed by a lead belcher mixed with Payne's gray ink for the shadows. And finally, Vallejo game silver for the highlights. I then go back and blend these colors together. Yeah, these swords are looking good. Yeah. I would see these over my work area, As a wall down in the basement, hanging. where I can come down alone after an argument with my wife. Exactly. And look at the swords. Yeah. Look at the Take swords. Take them out, too. Next up is the various brickwork. Mr. Magic Craft recommends painting the brickwork with a wide variety of colors and washes. This may look out of place at first, but after a heavy dry brush of gray, all of the bricks will look more uniform while still maintaining visual interest. I paint these large candlesticks with a 50-50 mix of lead belcher and retributor armor. This is a nice way to kill some of the saturation in the gold. We're almost at the end now. Let's make some fallen leaves using a coffee filter. Following a tutorial from Vincent Verterella, I apply various shades of green ink and washes onto the coffee filter. We want the color to mix, so don't be afraid to go nuts here. Only when the paint is fully dry do I start using my Green Stuff World Leaf Punch. I ended up using my airbrush to dry the paint. The leaf punch will not work unless the paint is bone dry. 
I dunk each leaf in a water and PVA glue mixture as I apply them to the bases. Once the leaves are in place, I apply that quick and dirty OSL through the airbrush all over the candles. And the bases are done. I did apply a little epoxy resin for the standing water, but the footage was lost. I had a really fun time making these bases. Each one is a little diorama in itself, and you can really go nuts making them. Since the base isn't the focus of the model, it gives you some freedom to try techniques that you wouldn't want to ruin a model with, like OSL. By referencing screenshots of the Dark Souls games, I feel like I was able to capture the feeling of the world and translate it into a miniature scale. I want to thank you for watching, I really hope you enjoyed it. I've been Sky from The Cozy Painter, and until next time, stay cozy.